What do you say we get back to work on our iron butterfly project inspired from the book The Secrets of the Forge? In the last video we simply cut the butterfly out using a chisel. This is cut from 8th inch sheet metal. Today we're going to texture it and shape the butterfly and hopefully get the butterfly itself done. And then in the next video we'll work on the stand that the butterfly goes on. So here is the project on page 96 of the book. And it shows a few different things. The butterfly it shows here is a little bit different than the butterfly it shows in this picture. So we have some options on how we want to proceed. What they're showing next is texturing with a ball peen hammer and putting some additional texture in the edges with a cross peen hammer. This one actually looks like it was stamped with an eye punch or a rivet setter. And we may do a little bit of both of those techniques. And then that the whole thing is dished and the body is shaped some. And at some point they've added on some wings which are gas welded in place and that's probably the approach we'll take to that. It seems like the most straightforward. So that's where we'll try to get to today is doing all of this shaping and get the, I should, did I say wings? I meant antenna. I don't remember what I said. Antenna is what we need to weld on. And then in the next video we'll worry about making this stand that it shows here. And here's the finished project that we're working on. So we'll go light the forge. We'll do some texturing. This has a lot of little scallops here that I didn't do because of, it was so much easier to chisel cut that in just a curve. So I'm going to draw that out with a ball peen hammer, I think. We'll see how that works when we get over to the forge. I think the first thing I want to do is draw his tail out just a little bit more. To do that, I'm going to put a little convenience bend in there. That way I can get a hammer in. Just give that a little bit more character. So now that I've done that, I can straighten it out again. That just gives that back end of the body or the tail, whatever you want to call it, just a little bit more character, I think. Next thing I want to do is try to draw out these little scallops, and I'm going to do that with the ball peen hammer. I think I'm going to do that from the back. You see how that kind of pulls a little scallop out? I'm going to do three spots on each side here. So I'm going to try and make these match on the back side, or the, the other side. Of course, I like these better. I'm going to have to try and wash them out a little bit to make them look like the first ones. So it'll have a nice organic look to it. So the next thing we'll do is go ahead and do a ball peen hammer texture on this. Generally, I'm not a fan of that for most forge work, but I think this is something that will benefit from the overall texture. So we're going to go ahead and do it just like the book says. Most of this will actually fade away and you won't be able to tell what the texture is by the time we're done. There's one reason it's not so bad. Let me just repeat that on the other side. I really think cutting this out is the most difficult part of the project. This does flatten out some of the volume we got from chisel cutting it, which is too bad. 
Now we're going to go around the edges of the wings with a little cross peen. And the book does show going all the way around. And you want it to be fairly perpendicular with the edge. So that means you have to work in an arc. That's essentially what we're doing there. Do the same thing to the other side. It cools off pretty quick, but it heats up pretty fast. So there we have our basic texture. The next thing I'm going to do I'm going to use an eyeball punch, and this is, some butterflies kind of have eyeball shapes on the wings. I'm going to do that just to give this a little bit extra character. Not necessary, just sort of feel like seeing what it looks like. As long as we're going to put eyes on there, we might as well put pupils on there. I think that'll be an interesting effect. Do that to the other side. Now let's take this to the wooden stump and let's dish it from the back side and make the, the wings more humped up and give some life to the body of the, the butterfly. It's kind of flat looking right now.
it starts to give it some real character. This is just whatever you feel like making your butterfly look like at this point. I'm going to use a hand fuller and a ball punch to try and shape the body a little bit better. Well, even with the glove on, that gets hot. And that does help. I think we're going to go ahead and do the antenna and then I'll do the final shaping of the wings with a torch to try and get some motion of flight when we mount it to the base. For the antenna, I'm going to just use some eighth inch gas welding rod. And I'm going to cut off just what looks right to me. And use that little piece for the antenna. It's probably about, well, nope, right at five inches. My anvil's five inches wide. Now looking at the example in the book, it looks to me like the antenna just form a loop and the loop is welded down here with a torch and trying to do this as much as possible the way it's done in the book I think that's exactly what we're going to do. This is a pretty simple matter of just trying to bend this in the middle. Not going to take much hammer work but it's a little bit bigger than I want. I just want to see if I can melt a little blob on the end of each of the antenna. Give them a little knob or whatever you want to call it on the end. I'm sure there's a technical name for that. Something like that. I took just a brief moment to shine up the material both on his forehead and on the antenna so that I can get a better weld. And we're going to weld that right about there. I'm going to start with just a little tack weld to keep it in place. And of course I melted it through. Let's see if we can fix it. So that being the case, we could have just made two separate antenna. But that is one of the advantages of welding with a torch, is you can fix stuff like that. I find it much harder with other forms of welding.
And as long as we have the torch out, let's go ahead and give these a little bit of character. We'll probably have to do more of this later. These little scrolling pliers really come in handy for this sort of a thing. Well, that was fairly simple. We now have a forged butterfly. And you could use this for all sorts of ornamentation. Just hang it on the wall if you wanted to. You might be able to figure out a way to incorporate it into some kind of a hook or add it into some kind of an architectural project as an accent somewhere. But we're going to go ahead and finish the project the way it shows in the book. And we're going to make a plant-like stand so it stands up on the stand and looks like it's in flight somehow. And we'll do that in the next video. Even after all that work, you can still see the obvious bevel and some of the detail left from chisel cutting it. So I still think that was a worthwhile effort, even though it took twice as long to cut it out as it did to do the rest of this. And probably it'll take about the same amount of time, about an hour, to do the stand. But we'll see. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to support the videos financially, there are links in the description for both PayPal and Patreon. If you choose to do so, that is only a donation. There is no obligation, no expectation on my part. In the meantime, I hope you can get out to your shop. I hope you can make something, but do it safely. Wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.